Hey guys, if you've watched my channel for a very long time, then you'll know that I happen to really, really like uh, these Honeywell smoke detectors, specifically these older models, and actually especially these three designs here, the uh, classic round cover with the three rows of round holes and the tapered sides with the four large side vents on the side. Um, uh, that happens to be one of my absolute favorite um, detectors of all time. This one right here, actually, because this is the one that came out of our old house um, that was up in our hallway. I actually used to be terrified of that unit when I was little. Um, but that's not the topic for this video today. The topic for this video today is this unit right here. Now, this is actually another Honeywell TC-49A model. Um, and I'll bet you've never seen one like this before. This is the TC-49A 1062-1. Now, um, Honeywell had, for their, uh, for their units, they always had the exact same model number, but then they had a suffix, which was four digits. And that was the designated, that, that, that de designated di the different models that they had. So, like, um, this one right here is the TC-49A 1195, which is the line cord um, contractor model. And then this one is the TC-49A 1054, which is the uh, plug-in hardwired model, or the, yeah, the hardwired model with the uh, wiring harness. And um, this one is the 1062, and um, basically what that means is that this is the line cord model that is only... Uh, wall mounted. Uh, it's not, you can't mount it on the ceiling. Um, and it also has a rectangular cover, which is very unique. Um, and this version is very rarely seen for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I guess these weren't as popular sellers, um, possibly because they're just line cord, they're not hardwired, they don't have interconnect or anything like that. Um, but if you'll take a look at the two side by side here, you can see they look really extremely different. This one's got the standard round cover with the three rows of round holes, like I mentioned before. And this one's got the rectangular cover with just, you know, a section of holes right there. Um, Honeywell logo. Still got your four side vents on the side, uh, but I don't think they're as wide. Yeah, they aren't as, they aren't as wide. Um, and the cover is still slightly tapered, which is pretty interesting. Um... So, yeah, despite the fact that the covers look entirely different, they're also, this one's a slight bit darker. Um, I'm not sure if there's any reason for that, if they just use different plastic or something. Um, but despite that, if I open up both of them, first open up this one. This is the 1054 model, by the way. And if I open up this one, you can say they look almost identical inside, which is really interesting. So Honeywell, all they did was they just reused the bases and they just, they just had different styles of covers for some reason. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, maybe, like I said, maybe it's because this one's slightly darker and they just wanted to have a different style. I, I really don't know. Um, another thing is that the cover, uh, to remove it, on this one you have to pull the side there next to the LED. On this one, because it's rectangular, it says to pull it right here at the bottom, which is interesting. Because when I, when I first went to open it up, I was trying to pull around here where I normally would on one of these, and I was like, why isn't it opening? And then I saw that there, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. So, take a look at the inside, and it should look very familiar to you if you've seen, you've seen these before on my channel, these TC-49A models. Um, and it is most reminiscent of the 1054 model. Um, as you can see, it has the larger sensor which has 13.4 microcuries of americium-241 in it. Unlike the battery-powered version, the TC-89B here, which had, if I can open it up, a slightly smaller sensor, and some models of the TC-49A also had that sensor. Um, I actually have one of them over here, I think. Yeah, right here. This is another TC-49A model that actually has that smaller sensor, and those always had 4.4 microcuries, not the 13.4 like these these have. So, um, yeah. It has the uh, Kobishi CLB-23 mechanical squealer horn, uh, just like this one does. Now, these used a variety of different horns. 
Some of them used Edwards horns like this one. This is the one from my old house. Um, and I typically find Edwards horns mostly were used in the contractor models. This one here that I just showed you with that smaller sensor also has an Edwards, Edwards horn. Um, and then some TC-89Bs also used it. This one, this one did. Um, then there were some that used Delta Alarm horns. I do have one of those as well. And then there were also some that used the Kobishi CLB-27. And I don't have one of those, but um, I think Ian might have one. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they, they, they exist. Um, so you can also see you got your transformer right there. Sensitivity adjustment. Now this one actually says sensitivity adjustment instead of sensitivity calibrator like they normally say. And it says low, high. Unlike the nor they normally just say max like that with an arrow pointing that way. Do not paint. Caution devices inoperative. Now there is no minimum operating temperature listed on there which they usually have as well. And if you look on the side here, there's the uh, model number and the specs, TC-49A 1062-1. Another interesting thing is that right here, ideally the date code would be right there, but as you can see, there is no date code. It's just DU stamped for some reason. I don't know what that stands for. But normally they would have this four-digit date code right here, um, 7622, that indicates it's from 1976. So I'm not quite sure when this one is from. I'm assuming it's a slightly later model, probably from 77 to 78. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know when this one is from. It's kind of a weird one. Um, and you'll notice that uh, in between the transformer and the cardboard here is the little cover interlock switch, which turns off the unit when the cover is removed, uh, which silences the alarm if it's going off. And it's just a little metal tab that pushes down on a closed-bodied plastic switch, which is another reason why I think it's later, because the earlier ones simply had a little metal tab that pushed down onto a dot of solder. Um, so that's another reason why I think this one's a slightly later one. Now, um, the back is also quite different from uh, the normal models. As you can see, it doesn't really have like the, the normal ones, they're kind of recessed like that, and they have room for the mounting bracket. Uh, but I did actually did not get a mounting bracket with this one, so I'm not sure if it would have come with one. The mounting bracket would look like this. It's just a metal plate that would... The tab goes in there, and then there's the captive screw right there that would screw into the place right there. But this one was missing that captive screw when I got it, and it was also missing the bracket. So there is a ground wire there for a captive screw to go in, so I'm not sure if it would have come with a bracket or if they would just expect you to hang it on the wall with like a nail in that, the, the little place where the tab goes. So let's go ahead and look at the cover now. So like I said, there's your uh, pull here to remove cover. It's on the bottom instead of right there next to the LED. Uh, you got Honeywell on there to silence remove cover, which is what those also had in the middle your side vents, and then on the inside is your uh, the thing that pushes down on the cover interlock switch, the tab there, and then this one just goes next to the transformer. And the label is actually on the back of that plate that's over the sensor, unlike these where it's on the side, which I'm not sure why they couldn't just stick it on the side there or something like that, but whatever, you can pause to read it if you want. It's just the exact same thing as the other label in the round cover models except it's black font. So um, another thing that I thought was interesting before I put the cover back on is notice the LEDs. Now they're in the exact same place but this one's got this sort of like bump out thing that kind of goes out. It's kind of angled for the for it to be in line with the cover. Oop, I just pushed on the cover interlock switch with this one. Um, yeah, so it's like kind of angled like that, so it's in line with the cover. But this one, it's straight like that, so it's also in line with this style cover. And, for furthermore, um, these covers are actually interchangeable. You can put this one on that one, and it'll work. And you can put this one on this one, and it'll work. And it actually will snap into those two open spaces right there. So that's definitely very interesting. I'm not sure if they actually had models with this style cover and this style base. They may have. So, um, yeah. 
Now, as you heard, when I pushed on the interlock switch and reactivated the unit, it chirped, which is what these always do whenever they are powered up first. And it's probably going to do it again when I put the cover back on. Yep. And that's one of the main reasons why I was so terrified of this one from my old house, because it would always chirp when the power would go off and go back on. And I was just so scared of it. So, um, now I'm going to go ahead and give this unit a test for you. Um, now, these units are also another characteristic of these Honeywell TC49As is that they don't have test buttons, so they have to use smoke to test them. Um, and I'm going to use this candle over here. Hopefully, I can get it to go off. So, um, let me just pause really quickly here and just get stuff set up. Okay guys, we're going to try testing this detector with a candle. Hopefully I can get it to go off. Okay, make sure it's on. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. that would work for sure. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Well, there you go. So it's still going off. Nope. Alright, well, it's not as sensitive as the other one. Unless I have the sensitivity adjustment turned down or something, which it doesn't seem to be. So, yeah, it's not as sensitive as some of the other ones I've encountered. Like my old one from our old house is much more sensitive. Thing goes off in like seconds. Let me get this off of the tripod. But yeah, so um, that's about it for this video. So um, uh, yeah, uh, just a quick overview of the Honeywell TC49A 1062 and uh, cameos from those other Honeywell units. Um, so thank you for watching and more to come.